In this quick tip, I'm gonna show you how to make a hexagonal mesh using the MoGraph cloner. And the advantage of doing this is it's incredibly light and fast to work with. You can create these really detailed models that are really, really interactive once you're done with them. So let's go over how to do this. And this is sort of the mid-step that we're gonna be trying to achieve is just this nice, even plane made up entirely of hexagons. So uh, let's create a new scene file. And the first thing that we want to do is make a single hexagon. And I'm going to do that using the inside spline. And the inside spline, I'm going to turn this into a polygon using the loft object. So if you add a loft object and drag the inside spline inside, it's going to create this single polygon. And if you turn on display garage shading lines, you'll see that it's actually made up of a series of triangles. And I don't want that. So what I want to do is go into my loft object and then I'm going to go to the caps tab so we can change the properties for our polygons and change the type here from triangles to ingons. And there we go. We've now got a nice clean single polygon. I'm just going to make this editable by tapping the C key on my keyboard. I'm going to delete this polygon selection tag because it's going to be more trouble than it's worth later on. And I'm going to rename this to hexagon. And uh, if I go into polygon mode and select this polygon, we'll see that my normals are reversed. I know that because it's blue here. And I'm just going to reverse that. So right click, reverse normals. And now my normal is facing in the correct direction. Okay, so we've got a single polygon. Now what I want to do is make a grid of them. And when I want to make a grid of something, I instinctually reach for the cloner, and that is not wrong. So grab the cloner, drag the hexagon inside of the cloner, and uh, change the mode here from linear, which will just make a line, to honeycomb array, which does what it says on the tin. It's going to make a nice grid of uh, sort of a honeycomb pattern. And what's really cool here is we can increase the width, we can increase the height, and get this nice big array of these. And if I want, I can take my scale tool and my model mode and just bring these down to a more reasonable size so that you know when I add a cube, it's not just crazy huge by comparison. Okay, now that I've got this, I've got a good uh, mesh here, at least as a starting point. And if I wanted, I could make this editable. And uh, well, Nope, I still have tons and tons of hexagons. So I need to find a way of collapsing them all into a single object. And for that, I'm going to use a connect object. So press and hold right there on the array, grab connect, drag the cloner inside. And when I make this editable, I see that I get a single polygon mesh. And when I grab any of these parts and move them, we see that they push out individually. So you could, I, I guess, even make a hexagonal landscape, which might be interesting to play around with. Uh, if you want to make a detailed model, what I recommend is actually modeling on just one of your hexagons. So I hit undo to get back to the point where I had just a single hexagon. And inside of here, I can do stuff like extrude inner and extrude. And the advantage of doing it on this single uh, polygon is it's much faster for Cinema 4D to calculate these changes right here than if it was trying to do it on every single one of these shapes. I don't know, uh, let's see, grow selection. Maybe I'll extrude these out. I don't know. I'm just messing around here trying to create interesting uh, shapes. So uh, whether or not we succeeded with that uh, is another issue entirely. So now I've got this crazy hexagonal arrangement, but it's all a little pillowy, and I want to change that. So I'm going to delete, uh, or I could delete the fong tag here, or I can just turn on an angle limit. And when I do that, I get something that looks a lot uh, better here. And to add a bit of rounding to my edges, what I can do is add a bevel deformer inside of my hexagon. So add the bevel deformer and turn on this use angle property. And it's now only going to bevel these sort of harder edges. And you can adjust the number of uh, steps uh, as you like. And once, you've, once you're done, just make it editable. And you've now got a nice light highly interactive mesh uh, that's going to be great to work with. And you can create all sorts of things with this. So if this quick tip was helpful, please like this video, share it, or visit Cineversity.com for more great tutorials and resources.